All right, let's talk about preparation. Okay. Things we do before we even walk up to the mixing console. Documentation. Input lists. Great. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's a massive deal. Yeah. Well, I think for, especially f as you're building a team and thinking about volunteers and thinking about how do I best onboard somebody to the process who may not even know much about audio, this is such a fundamental piece of just basics of how to get started. Before I ever walk into the booth, I, I, I mean, there's an input list generated. Right. Like some people walk up to the console and that's the first thing they're going to do. Man, it's all about creating the process, the paperwork, that input list. Where's this all going to land? What's the routing? What's the ID number if you're using a digital console, which is different than your input number? Like, how does all that lay out? That yep. organizational side, those details, if they're not figured out, I'm, it's kind of a waste of time for me to walk up to the desk. So talk me through what's on your input list from left to right, top to bottom. Yeah, on our input list, uh, there's, an I, there's a patch number. So where does, a, where does an input physically go into a subsnake on stage? So... Is it subsnake one, two, three, four? Is it called a drum snake? Whatever your labeling conven convention is, it talks about where that is and then where it goes into the actual physical stage patch, um, which is, you know, the, uh, that's a big deal. Then it's got an ID number. So we know on the console when it gets there, yep. it doesn't necessarily relate to a fader. It's just an ID number. Where are you going to put it, yep. right? You can put it anywhere. Then it's labeled what it is. Not uh, Jim's guitar. That doesn't mean anything to me. I want to know, is it stage right, stage left, center stage, downstage center, yep. backstage, whatever. A, a real label. And then is it electric or acoustic? Electric or, or acoustic DI or, or mic. sitar, you know, whatever. Um, you guys don't use sitars? No, oh. no. Not anymore. Oh, you should. Um, and then, then some information on it, if there's any, anything else, like is it a DI, is it a microphone, what kind? Does it need phantom power? Um, does it not? Uh, and sometimes we even put down what kind of mic stand it's on. Yeah. Just to know. So you've got all this information that anybody could look at this sheet and go, all the answers are already, an all the questions are already answered. It's like every point of failure for that channel. It's right there. It's right there. That's good. The way I look at paperwork for me, and I don't know you guys do it, but I should be able to hand you that document and we shouldn't have to talk about it. Right. If there's enough information on the document and you can read. Yeah we should be able to walk away. And it's not because you don't like people. It's because well, you... It's not just because okay, you don't like people. Not just because. It's because you like them so much, you want them to have the right tools to win. I want them to win. I want these people to, to leave there going, this is great. And I want them to have that expectation from anybody later in their life or career to go, where's the input list? So we go to festivals a lot, right? And you walk up and you have 30 minutes to get your stuff ready to go. What would happen if you guys didn't have your documentation to hand to somebody and go, this is my patch, this is what I need? Yeah. What would happen? You get out front and go. You know what happens is, <laughs> what happens all the time is that management sent the festival three the years. input list from three years yes. ago. So they, they went ahead and patched it and it's all wrong. Yeah, it's all wrong. Because changed everything Thanks since a lot. then. Thanks a lot. Right. The, uh, the spirit of help was there, but maybe not the execution. That's right. But... Or do you guys put anything else on your input list than that? Any I mean, info? It, anything. So it can be the analog patch, the Dante patch, the direct outs. Yeah. The, you know, if you're everything. sending to broadcast and all it's a different it. patch. And yeah, I'll put information so yep. that ear mixes yeah. and whose it is and where it's going and all that. I'll even sometimes document outputs on the console. So aux yeah. is 1 through 24, even if it's a drum verb, still that right. you know because aux 18 may be a fold back to monitors of something that he yeah. actually needs on the patch sheet. So be careful when you get there. Well, we run monitors from front of house, and I know a lot of other people do. That's a big deal too. Like what are all those output patches going to? Especially yep. if you're sending to stereo ears, that's a big deal. Now yep. where is all that stuff going? I know that for us, uh, during an event, once we get going into the event, the stage manager is running the backstage. It has saved my butt many times that that stage manager, not an audio pro, can walk back and look at a patch sheet that's hanging on the patch bay when there's a problem and go, I can easily move this from 15 to 72 because 15 just had a, a prop roll over it and it's a bad line. Right. 
and has kept the show moving, that's kept great. the service moving. I mean, that's a huge deal just from a document. So how do you guys manage um, digital versus print, printouts and where are they placed and who has access and all that? Like, is, it, um, is there a computer that you can look at at front of house to double check? Is it just print copies only? How do you, how do you manage that? We leave all of them in a shared folder in a Google Docs or Dropbox, anything like that. And then there's printout copies everywhere. Every yep. console, backstage, stage left, stage right, yeah. upstage. At the patch bay is probably the most important part that some yeah. people forget, yep. is leaving a copy there. Because when you have to run backstage, you'll usually forget to take the patch sheet with right. you. So putting one backstage, wherever any right. massive connections, patch bays happen. Any pain point. Yep. Yep. Any pain point we're at, we're gonna put one there. That's so great. ours is, uh, we put it in, a, in Dropbox, and then it's printed out everywhere. You know, we're, we're talking about systems that are pretty complicated at our churches you know digital dante input stuff that isn't just a channel of a console but even for the guys who are working with a 32 channel analog simple system yeah this is still so important get in the habit yes because you know what you may be on on a small 32 channel console today tomorrow you may not you may be asked to come be a guest engineer somewhere and all of a sudden, you don't have this organizational principle in mind, that's kind of a big deal. It's all about setting up systems yeah. that can be clear, clearly communicated, and clearly executed so that everybody on the team has margin. You know, you do this, things get easier, so you have time. You right. have, it's like, oh, this, this is just handled. Right. I don't have to run around like a headless chicken trying to get this stuff done by memory because there's no way to remember it all anyway. Right. right. And then... Our friends that are watching that don't have one, we're going to share one with them that they can download from this. Cool. Yeah, so great. we'll have a template yeah. that's a basic starting point. Yep. Awesome. That's good.